of my Ripiculus Lelias are on this table and you can see how the sun is now coming to a point where I really don't want them that exposed. Out in the wild, they can take it. Here, I'm a little bit more cautious. So before I put them down onto the lower shelves to be a little bit more protected, welcome to an update on my Ripiculus Lelias. This is, like I said, just some of them. The other ones are in the blooming alley. This is easy access because pretty much some are either resting, like this little cutie here, Esalkeana, has bloomed. And when I say resting, nothing is happening on the top, but I've got root growth happening in the pot, so resting in inverted commas. This one right here is in sheath. This is my Crystilabia. Right there, it's got a sheath. Will it bloom or won't it? The first ones that it produced, they didn't amount to anything. Maybe we are third time lucky. Here is my Araguensis. Very slow grower, but beautiful new growth right there. Love it. And this one right here is definitely resting. This one just bloomed for us this season. So this is Ketiana. So I'm not seeing anything happening here. Maybe the odd root is growing, but that looks like it was from before. And check this one out. What a trooper, Bayensis. Newcomer to my collection was potted up earlier this year as it came in. And look at that, beautiful new growth. Literally, we could say out of nowhere, clearly from the base, but very, very unexpected, considering it wasn't a very strong little orchid or piece that I got. Still, isn't that marvelous? Awesome. Here I've got Fornery. Fornery is maturing currently two new growths, one here and one here. And there's a little bit of root activity and starting a teeny tiny new growth at the base down there. Don't know if you can see that. It blends in so well with the lava rock. Tiny, tiny. This is the charm for me with these Rapiculus Lelias. Yes, I love the blooms. They are so cute. But the process of growing them is what I absolutely enjoy. This one here has been extremely weak for the longest time, and it's grown this gorgeous growth. And uh, what do you know? It's a bifoliate. <laughs> That's interesting, but it's the roots I'm interested in even more, and they can either stop if they don't get down into the media quick enough, or they get into the media and they're doing okay. So this one is on the road to becoming a substantial little Ripiculus Lelia in my collection. I was quite concerned about it for quite a long time, but isn't that amazing? A bifoliate Ripiculus Lelia. Who knew? I didn't. Here we've got another one. I may need to shift around a bit. You see that new growth there? Oh, I am so happy. This is Rupestris. And Rupestris came with only two pseudobulbs and a prayer, literally. There are no roots in the pot. Look, it's so loose. So I hardly move it up to the top of the table, but I want that new growth to get the energy and the light, even though it's always in shade because I need new roots. But isn't it remarkable that they are not declining on the pseudobulb front and it pushed out a new growth where there was not an eye. These two pseudobulbs didn't have a single eye on them and it had to do something of its own accord. And then one day it just had a little bit of a bump and boop, there we have a new growth. Very, very excited about that. And here has just finished maturing a new growth is Alvariguensis. One new growth, but a beauty, which means there's roots in the pot now. Strong, sturdy little Rapiculus Lelia. Very pleased about that. Here is Diana. Very slow, but we have a strand of roots, at least, to show for, and a beautiful new growth. It's a climber, but hey, in this setup, as long as I can keep some roots happy, I'm okay. I don't mind having climbers. In hindsight, I could have moved it back into the pot, but I didn't know the growth habit of this orchid. So there we go. Diana is getting some new roots, extending and branching. Muy importante. 
Right, let's move on to Lucasiana. Lucasiana has never really given me any headaches whatsoever and is maturing two new growths. These two right back here. So that one's already rooted in very nicely. And here's little Lelia gracilis, which the leaf is pushing the tag away. I don't like that. There we go. I've lost a couple of leaves this season, so I'm a little bit more cautious with it. But other than that, you see here's a bulb. I lost the tag there. But other than that, it's doing okay. I've, I've got roots in the pot, so that's important. But no new growths for gracilis so far. That's fine. Whatever it's doing, just stop dropping leaves and we'll be quite happy together. <laughs> Here is Lelia Regina. See how the pseudobulbs are desiccating despite roots? Hmm. I find that they are very, the Regina and the Regentii, I have noticed, they're very finicky on the root front. I don't like the desiccation of the pseudobulbs there, but I've got a beautiful growth coming in. So the energy is going to that growth and I've got two wonderful growths here at the front lead and roots. She's gonna be okay. I just think it's such a waste of uh, energy going into beautiful roots and yet I'm still, you know, losing some of the plumpness of the pseudobulbs. But hey, as long as she is going to be okay, and that is all I'm seeing here. She's a little trooper. Here's Regentii, and I have three Regentii. It's one that split into two pieces, and the second one was a gift from Luke, which is a much more protected area because it's new and needs to root in. But this little Regentii here is going bonkers. Happy days. Got this new growth coming in there, and I have two back to back, actually three, but I'm not going to move them around. But here's a new growth as well. And then back to back, right here, one that didn't fully mature because of lack of energy, but the next one's coming up and it looks a little bit better. And it's also going nuts on the roots, which is very important because, again, Regentii is a reluctant root keeper. Well, short break there, the gardener is done. My turn to continue. So let's move on to little Itambana here and look at this little growth coming out. Ah, I love it. And then all the roots, a busy, busy little orchid. One of the growths in the back here is maturing as well. This is what I love about these ridiculous lelias. The blooms are cute, but oh my goodness, when they come out with little growths like that, it just warms my heart. I love it. And then over here is the Cincorana cerula, which I was hoping was going to bloom. Then it opened the leaf and it was empty. What a shame. Oh well, maybe this growth will be the one that will bloom for us. And over here is Giliani. Giliani, I'm not sure if this growth is going to make it. Maybe some of my mist water got in here. Hmm, that, I don't like the look of that tip because the other growth down in there, as you can see straight at us, doesn't look like that. So I might get away with it. I don't know, not sure. But at least there's enough of a base on that growth that'll give me roots. So we looked at Katiana, we looked at, oh yes, here's another Cincorana. Look at this stonking growth coming up right here. That's a beauty. And there's another one coming right there. Love it. Absolutely love it. Also, the roots are okay. You can see how they deteriorate in my climate if they come and get too hot and exposed. And that's why I put them under the shelf just to protect the orchid a little bit more, but I'm hoping that there's roots in the pot. With a growth like this, yeah, I think she's okay. <laughs> and then over here is another Gentii, another piece that came that off when I was repotting Compadre over there. And it's doing very, very well, I would say. You got the three new growths there and the roots are going down in the pot. I'd like to see that as well. So yes, light training is a go-go, and that is why they're kind of facing away from us, from where their growing leads are, so that they can 
come towards and into the pot. I have one more that I've already put down during the break of the gardener. I want to show you my Harpophila. There she is. I keep her a little bit more protected as well. She gets enough light to bloom for us. Sorry if the mic picked the wind up there, but look at this new growth here. That is a sight for sore eyes. Love, love, love it. You can be in that pot for years. <laughs> Yeah, that's Harpophila. Beautiful. So happy. Now let's go to the blooming alley and check on the other ones. Here is Lelia Flava crispata. I've got her a little bit more protected simply because of a recent repot. Well, recent, but for Rapiculus Lelias, a repot is always something they have to get established. I didn't want to move her a lot, so she's on this shelf back here in my blooming alley. And I don't even have to move her to flush her or water her because I've put the holes right over the edge. And this way she can get more established and secure. Beautiful, beautiful new growth coming in. This is what I like to see. Let's have a look, see if that leaf, no, it won't be bothering it. Not yet anyway, but look at those roots now. Very, very pleased with Lelia Flava. And if she doesn't bloom because she's not getting enough light, I shouldn't see why not. I mean, it's bright enough, even though it doesn't look like it from where we just came. But you never know with these Lelias if they like the light levels. But still, she's establishing herself in that pot. And that was what the exercise was all about for 2021. Down here, let me just get my tag out. This is Lelia crispata. So Lelia Flava, we just saw, this is Lelia Crispata, and Flava was moved to be Lelia Crispata, but then I don't know what this is, because the leaves are completely different, but as well, repot recently this year, and had to stay established in the pot. Do not move. The new growths are really developing beautifully. There's two of them. And again, I've got my holes facing this way so I can flush water and mist without worrying about moving or turning the pot. While we're at it, I've got Cernua right here, also a recent repot. I was a very, very nervous about taking this one off the mount. It is wonky in the pot, but there's a reason for that. It was a mounted orchid before, but look at the chubbiness of that pseudobulb. And it was wrinkly before. When we did this repot, it was wrinkly. And now look at it. I don't see any new growth at this point in time, but I've got roots in the pot. <sighs> very, very relieved. I cannot tell you. So Entsfeldsii bloomed for us and is down here simply because I'm not happy with how it is situated in the pot, as in not established root wise. And it's not growing a new growth as of this point either. But again, down here I can flush mist and I don't have to move the pot. And finally, these are the two new candidates from Floralia that we could pot up relatively quickly because of the root action and it was early enough in the season to do so. And this is Mantecari. Look at that. That's the new growth that we had to work with. And those are the roots that have extended since the repot. Same story right here. I don't move the pot, I flush and take care of this orchid in situ. The only pot I would have to move when I take care of it is this piece of Lelia regentii, which came as a gift from Luca Orchidane. Really appreciated that gift. I was blown away. And we could pot her up, seeing as we had gorgeous new growths coming. And there's another new one right there. So we had this one right in our face, and it had a kink when it arrived but it's extended and is forming its pseudobulb. And now it's pushing out another new growth right there. And my goodness, what a trooper. The little growth in the back there is also developing. And I'm sure I now have roots in the pot, but I lift it out of the mask very, very gently. And then I put it back in the mask. So these guys do not get moved. We won't see blooms, I don't think, but we will have ourselves some very, very healthy orchids. So, Crispata, or who are you? Crispata, previously Flava, gorgeous. This is working out great. 
And this is where they're going to be for the rest of the day now. Still have a lot of light, but a little bit more protected from the elements, the hot sun. If the winds were to drop, the leaves would heat up too much. And yes, I understand that in nature they can take it, but ha, they are not in nature here with me and I'm a little bit cautious about their progress and don't want to stress them too much. I bring them up again around 7, 7.30 when the sun isn't as hot, but still shines onto that table there. And you can see how the shadow starts to move in. As the angle of the sun lowers in the sky, eventually this table will be in shade all day. And that's when I stop moving them up and down, up and down. And then all the other ones can join them on this table because I will not be shifting them around so much. Thank you so much for your time. I hope that you enjoyed this little update of my little Rapiculus Lelias. I'm sorry for the jiggling of the camera sometimes. I do apologize. I hope it wasn't a terrible, terrible viewing experience. Have yourselves a wonderful day. I appreciate your time. Hopefully see you in the next video. Take care, stay safe. Bye.